All right, if you have been considering building in the Meshlicious or you've built one up already, you might have heard of these so-called standoff mods. So today I'll show you what that is all about and how to do it and why you might want to consider it. Welcome to Machines and More. Cable management. That is one of the areas that many of you have identified as a pain point in this case and this standoff extension is a great solution for that so today we'll take a look at that and I'll also discuss how to space out the GPU riser cable as well as the thermal impact from that choice as well. Now earlier in the year we took a look at the Meshlicious with a Founders Edition RTX 3070 card and one of the things discussed was how to properly set up the case for cards with a significant flow through section and we saw a meaningful benefit there. I did recently do an all mesh build guide with this case so I had a chance to do some additional AB testing also to, to determine the thermal impact of the riser cable mod there. All right, so let's start off with the standoff mod on the motherboard side of the case. Normally messing around with standoffs on a case isn't a good idea because there's a defined location for the rear IO of the board. It's cut out. So changing that significantly may cause your motherboard to not fit anymore. On the Meshlicious, there isn't an easy place to hide cables, but if you shift the board up, there's going to be a channel there to use for that purpose. Now, to mitigate that motherboard cutout issue I described, there's a removal cover here. And the intent of this actually is typically for shifting the entire center divider over to accommodate a four slot GPU. But one thing we can do without moving the entire tray is just to remove that cover, shift it over, and uh, we'll be moving the entire motherboard 20 millimeters out which is the width of that slot and a PCIe slot in general. There are a few different versions of the standoffs that I've seen come with the case, but all these are 632 standoffs. So one thing folks have done is they go out and they get 20 millimeter 632 standoffs and just thread those into the existing six millimeter ones. Now, alternately, I have an M3 standoff kit here. So what I did was just replace the existing ones with an approximately 26 millimeter long assembly. And I just used a screw and a standoff combo to make it work this way. And if you use the right screw to attach to your motherboard with the M3 screw, just get, get the standoffs there in tight and voila, like it was meant to be there. Now there is a downside to doing this, of course. And as a result of this, your CPU cooler is now restricted to being only about uh, 52 millimeters in height or so. Now RAM height is gonna also be affected, but that's not as much of a problem. I think you still have plenty of space here. But because of the lower clearance, air cooling is really limiting at this point. So I wouldn't really go there, but uh, this will majorly impact folks that use an AIO as well, because it'll limit your selection. Uh, to name a few that do work though, the EK AIOs are okay. The Fantex AIOs look to be fine. Most Corsair units are okay. But what's not okay actually is the original ML240 Illusion I tested this case with and um, some of the NZXT-X series, uh, those have pretty tall uh, pump heads. So just be aware of that limitation. Now the good news is it really cleans up cabling since now you have all this free space behind there to snake the PSU cables in and out, tuck things away, zip tie things down. So it's just a huge convenience and a functional benefit there. For the GPU side of the house, if you did this motherboard standoff mod, you're gonna be limited to three slot cards at this point. If you're already there, there's less of a benefit to this next riser cable mod, but uh, if you have a two slot card like this EVGA XC3, then keep watching. What you're gonna do here is essentially space out the riser cable an extra amount also. Now there is some flexibility here. It doesn't need to be a full 20 millimeters. Uh, for example, if your card is a little thicker than two slots, you're not gonna be able to go the full 20 since it might just hit the panel at that point. Uh, so with this card, I've gone an extra 16 millimeters here. There aren't actually physical slots cut out at the bottom of the case. So you're, you kind of have infinite gradations there, but you do have a limitation from those thumb screws. So just be aware, even though there's no cutouts at the bottom, uh, it's not like you have infinite adjustment available for that, but I think you can get close enough to where you need to be. Uh, so with this card, I've gone an extra 16 millimeters or so here, and I've just replaced the existing standoffs in order to space them out. If you have 632 standoffs, you can just push them out a little bit too. This puts the card right here 
directly at the mesh panel. So if you do this mod for an AIB side exhausting card like this one, this is useful primarily to let the card bring in cooler air. And that's great since the time and materials involved here don't amount to much, but there is still a tangible benefit. And what's that thermal impact? We'll say this, it definitely does a lot more for a specialized airflow card like the Founders Edition Ampere cards. And that's because the flow through part of the cooler is so vital to that card working well. It's almost like half of the cooler, right? So it almost doesn't work well at all when it's constricted. So let's just take a quick revisit uh, for the previous benchmarks. I'll compare a spaced out 3070 FE to one that's right up against the back plate. And we're looking at a six degree swing here in gaming thermals on the GPU. And also because of how solid this chunk of a card is and how it impedes the intake path of an exhausting radiator, there's also a significant benefit to the CPU temps here. For gaming, of course, this is a little bit more pronounced since the rat is intaking a lot of GPU exhaust. So any cooler airflow uh, coming in is going to have a profound impact. But uh, even with the CPU only benchmark, the more direct airflow pattern for these rad fans result in almost a three and a half degree swing. And that is pretty impressive. So if you are running a 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080 FE card, then um, any of those two slot cards, then this is definitely recommended. So for the AIB card, we're going to see less of a boost here. The 3080 XC3 doesn't rely heavily on a flow through section. So this really isn't a big deal for that to be impeded, but getting the side intake fans close to the mesh side panel, absolutely helpful. And here there's about a two and a half, a three degree gap between the two. With the CPU, it's not as big of a deal here. The tested case here was a dual mesh panel version, but the airflow through a side exhausting GPU just isn't as restrictive anyway as uh, compared to the solid chunk that is the FE cards because there's gonna be more airflow with the side exhausting card. For the CPU only test, there's not a significant difference here. Now I'd call these functionally equal. Of course, no news is good news here, right? Because at least we know it doesn't hurt. So if you did the motherboard mod, two then as mentioned you can only do this with two slot cards now three slot cards otherwise would already be close right up against that side panel so it's fine if you can't do it but one thing if you have a three slot 3090 fe card you want to use in this case so the one way to make that work well is to shift the entire center divider over and the same new lower CPU cooler limitations apply here, right? But then you'd also shift the riser cable out the same way. So essentially you're giving the card the center channel here at uh, your cable management. That will be a little bit more tight on the motherboard side, but you know, you gotta pick and choose your battles. So the downsides with this mod, the display cables, especially with that right angle HDMI cable, it's gonna be more tight, uh, but normally with something like that, you just set it and forget it uh, unless you move your case around a lot. So personally, I don't think it's a big trade-off and it can still fit in there. You just gotta be a little bit more careful and uh, deliberate about uh, using the display cables. So that pretty simple mods, but I think very effective. And I'd definitely be considering these if I were building in a mesh delicious today. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll leave my particular standoff kit link down below if you you are interested. Thanks for watching today.